horse is truly one of the most beautiful creatures in the animal kingdom. Its power and grace has impressed man for centuries. And when treated with skill and caution, the horse is a safe and enjoyable companion. Treated any other way, a horse can cause serious injury. Each year, we hear of people who are injured in horse-related accidents. The animal rarely intends to hurt us. Accidents happen because of mistakes in riding or handling. This film is to make you aware of some of the dangers inherent in working with horses and to provide some guidance in avoiding accidents. To ride is the reason that most of us have horses. But riding introduces additional risks to those that were encountered as a handler. Principally, bucking, rearing, and herding. Again, these animals are exhibiting the instinctive behavior that governs many of the actions of a horse. A good rider must counter these instincts with skill and training. Dangerous situations when riding are almost always predictable to the experienced rider. New riders who feel they know it all are strictly accidents looking for a place to happen. And an accident can be created before the ride. Such as when taking out a horse that has not been used in a while and expecting him to remember his lessons. Horses need continual training. And if a poorly trained horse is ridden at a time when he's normally fed, don't be surprised if he wants to return to the barn with or without you. Last but not least, take your time tacking up and make sure it's done correctly. On the trail is no time to find that the saddle is loose. Mounting and dismounting is the in-between world where the rider has to be especially cautious as one foot in and one out of the stirrups is a risky situation. But even before reaching that point, it would be amiss of me not to mention that bridling an animal should be done as efficiently as possible so that the animal doesn't become irritated and difficult to work with. When we're bridling the horse, we always want to untie the horse before we bridle him. If we leave them tied up and we go to bridle them, if the horse should spook, two things could happen. First of all, the shank could break or whatever they're tied to could break and that could hit us because we'd be in the way. Or secondly, if the horse pulled back and felt the pressure of the halter on the poles and the equipment didn't break, then the horse would likely lunge ahead to relieve the pressure. And again, we would, we would be in a very vulnerable position. So we untie the horse to bridle them, but we don't put the bridle on over top of the halter. We take the shank of the halter and are careful not to wrap it around our bodies. We place it over our arm, but we don't wrap it. And then we take the halter off. But we don't just wrap it because we have to keep control of the horse. So we place it around the horse's neck, fairly close to the pole up here, so that we have maximum control. You see, I have my bridle already on my other arm, so my equipment is ready and it's not tangled up around my feet. When I go to place the bridle on the horse, I reach down between her ears and take the top part of the bridle in my hand. I then put the bit under her chin and cup the bit between my thumb and my fingers. I don't push on her teeth with the bit. I just place my fingers in the corner of her mouth. When she starts to mouth my fingers, I then carefully raise the bit into position, push the chin strap under her chin, and then put her ears into the head stall. All riders should wait till the last member of the group is mounted. This rider could easily lose her balance and be dragged. Kicking the horse with either foot while scrambling on board is very likely to repeat the previous scene. Be aware of your surroundings when mounting. If you didn't bump your head getting on board, then you might when the horse runs into a stall. And keep hold of the reins. They are your only means of control if the horse should move out unexpectedly. Before mounting the horse, always check the curb strap on your bridle because that's the control device on your curb bit. Then check your cinch because you don't want the saddle falling off when you're getting on. Before you go to step up, always make sure you have control of your horse. Your reins are the device that you maintain control with. Before putting your foot in the stirrup, shorten your left rein so that the horse's head is turned slightly towards you. This will keep the horse's attention on you, so it was not likely going to spook when you go to mount. And also, if it should move 
while you are mounting, then it will be moving toward you and there will be less chance of you falling off and getting drunk. Place your left foot in the stirrup, your left hand on the reins, on the neck, and your right hand on the horn. When you go to get on the horse, make sure you take several bounces before you leave the ground. This gives you some momentum so you're not pulling the saddle off of the horse's back. If you're not in real good shape or if you're a bit short in comparison to the height of the horse, then it's going to be necessary for you to bounce a little longer and get up on the horse safely and quickly. Inexperienced and untrained riders can cause problems for themselves and others by lacking anticipation for hazards such as this branch or crowding the rest of the group on a tight trail. Riding over your head in both terrain and speed can be a painful mistake if more than your hat falls off. And rushing into a group is almost certain to create problems. Horses act instinctively and either fight or take flight when they feel threatened. Don't assume that all the riders in a group are of equal skill. This rider is on a runaway as her horse tries to keep up with the others. Discuss the ride before going and compensate on behalf of the inexperienced rider. Be observant of the footing and terrain that you're riding on. Steep descents such as this can be harrowing for the inexperienced rider and dangerous if the horse has not been trained on. This horse is showing the correct way to go down a steep hill. It's head up, the center of gravity well back as it slides down under control. Beware of weak surfaces. This bridge is not in good shape, and if the rider forces her horse to try to cross it, disaster could result. Even good bridges are unnatural to an untrained horse. This one is definitely not sure that the bridge is safe, and it'll take patience and skill on the part of the rider to convince it otherwise. This animal has received the proper training. Good performances on the trail or in the ring are the result of training. If you need help, see an expert. Hazards are around us all the time, but when riding, beware of dogs, as they can appear out of nowhere, or so it seems to a horse. Or flapping objects, such as this garbage bag. A surprised horse will immediately jump or run. And even other horses present problems. Watch for a horse with a red ribbon on its tail. This means it kicks. Ride with the traffic, not against it. And don't spread out all over the road. The cars will have a difficult time getting by you, thereby creating an extremely dangerous situation, not only for the riders, but for the drivers as well. Vices are uncorrected bad habits, and those involving horses are often developed by an inexperienced rider who lets the horse get away with too much. A common example is a horse that walks out as the rider is attempting to mount. Novices often let their horses run back to the barn. Runaways could result if this training continues. Another vice that is often created by novice riders is jigging, an action that inexperienced riders think makes a horse look proud or pretty. A horse that jigs can be a real irritation on a ride. It's not an easy vice to correct, though. You may need the help of a trainer. And if a horse learns that he can get you to dismount by scaring you with a rear or a buck, then get ready to be scared a lot. Every time you get off, you're rewarding the horse, strengthening the vice. Controlling a horse and avoiding problems are the two principles that help create a safe riding environment. Training people is the first step, and how they learn is by receiving adequate professional guidance and instruction for the type of riding they intend to do. Most people would not think of going skiing or swimming without first taking some lessons. Therefore, does it not make sense to suggest that all horses and riders be given professional instruction to assure that both understand the skills necessary for safe enjoyment of our sport. Riders must learn the basics, such as how to circle a horse down to a stop in an emergency, and also learn something as intangible as patience, like giving this horse time to understand that the water won't hurt him and it's safe to cross. Try and force the animal, and you could have a dangerous battle on your hands. Good riders create good horses, so have your skills developed or sharpened by an expert. Training the horse is the next step in achieving a safe relationship. Train the horse for the activity that you intend to pursue, and don't force the animal into a situation that's alien to him. 
don't expect a horse to perform well at a skill or activity for which he has not been trained. <laughs> Facility safety is important so that a ride can remain a pleasant one. Don't leave equipment lying around the riding or stable areas. And close all gates. An open gate is an invitation for a quick and unexpected exit. Another reason to keep gates and barn doors closed is that a gate latch can be as deadly as a knife if a horse or rider is jammed against it. And keep the riding and pasture area clear of binder twine, sections of barbed wire, or sharp objects. Don't let this extensive list of high-risk situations make you think that horse ownership is inherently dangerous. It isn't. All of the scenarios that you've seen portrayed in this film can be eliminated by just one thing, common sense. And that can be developed by training for both horse and rider. Novices must begin with a well-trained horse and will improve under the instruction of an experienced trainer. Both horse and rider can develop and you'll be better able to appreciate the pleasures of horse riding. And this training must emphasize being aware around horses at all times. Develop horse sense, learn from the mistakes of others, and enjoy the sport in safety. <laughs>